Hi, so today I want to talk about the China brain thought experiment, an interesting philosophical thought experiment to sort of think more about what makes a brain and more so what makes a consciousness. So the China brain thought experiment is really simple. So our own human brain has about 86 billion connections, uh, 86 billion neurons, and each one of those neurons has tens and hundreds of connections, linking them together into this interesting network that gives rise to this experience that you and I are feeling right now, the, the feeling of being present in the moment. It depends a lot on what exactly people are asking. Uh, you know, are we talking about just intelligence or consciousness? But anyway, the China brain thought experiment. Let's imagine that we have China, whatever sh shape China is. And let's say that China has 86 billion, uh, 86 billion people uh, in this thought experiment. And let's say that each one of these Chinese people, like a node in a network, each one of them has a walkie-talkie on hand. So each one of them has a means to communicate with every single other node of the network. And so let's say that all of them are connected and they can send signals to each other exactly the same way uh, like neurons would do in our brains, um, interconnected in every possible way, but you know, I won't try anymore. But essentially, so uh, all of them are connected, all of these 86 billion people, human beings, cannot talk with each other or anything like that. They can only send really simple messages in the exact same way that our brain would. So uh, essentially, we're simulating a brain only on a really large uh, and different scale. So. A question is, what do you think? This, this hypothetical brain-like sort of experiment, uh, 86 billion people, each with walkie-talkies, uh, sending identical signals uh, that your brain would send, uh, reacting to stimuli and all of the rest of the thing. But anyway, the second part of the thought experiment is that all of these 86 billion people, uh, the output from all of their uh, calculations and interactions goes to a sort of body, an uh, empty robotic body. And uh, so the question is, uh, would this robotic body have the experience of consciousness? Because all of the computation in our brains that uh, gives rise seemingly to consciousness is going on in this network between these people sending these messages and all of them get inputs and send outputs and uh, all of the functions here together go into this body and into this sort of, uh, you know, receiver, sort of radio receiver. And so the question is, uh, would this body be conscious? Uh, that's a question to you. Now, I do not know. It's, it's a profoundly weird thought experiment to me. Uh, I don't even know, frankly, if the body would function, but I think it would have to. Uh, because it's still continuing all these calculations, all the simple things. So let's say this, this robotic weird body walks around in an environment and its input, you know, it's in a forest somewhere, it sees trees and animals and grass and like uh, hills and something. And all of that input that this uh, robot thing gets, gets uh, into the brains, not really brains, but into this network of people as input. And all of them process it the same way, arguably, that uh, our brain would uh, process it. So uh, we have some assumptions. One assumption would be that the brain is purely these calculations that are going on that are really simply mapped and that that is all that is going on in the human brain, that there's no other quantum physics, there's no other magic, soul, spirit, anything like that. Only thing is just these calculations. Uh, it is so weird. Uh, but just another example, you know, what if instead of this kind of brain, uh, we just had uh, an infinite scroll of paper that goes on until infinity. And uh, on this infinite scroll of paper, uh, we write by hand 
all of the calculations that go on in the human brain, like literally every single computation you can imagine, particle interaction. I mean, it depends how deep we have to go. Do we go on the level of, you know, atoms and molecules interacting with each other? So making those fundamental physics calculations or even the quantum mechanics, which that would, that would be. Uh, or is it just necessary on the level of just neurons firing and getting input and output and, and uh, all the neurotransmitters and chemicals floating around in our brains and stuff like that, you know, uh, what level do we need to simulate it on it? And as a side note, it's always fascinating to me to think about it. How many different levels to this world uh, we have? We live on this sort of medium scale uh, of, of, of the world on a scale of meters is you know our body sizes approximately and uh but we can zoom way smaller and we can equally zoom out way bigger it's just i don't know maybe there's some really obvious simple explanation to it but uh it's just interesting to note you know uh to me i think so uh, doing these calculations by hand would that result in consciousness you know and if it would result in consciousness what part of this system would be conscious would the paper be conscious would the pen you're writing it would be conscious uh, you know what what part of that would be conscious um, is a really difficult thing to say I think what these things illustrate really well is how little we know and how little we understand about what consciousness is I, uh, I I do my best, you know, as much as I can to uh, avoid sounding like some kind of, you know, voodoo magic hippie, but uh, it is a fact that there is a lot that we don't know about the universe, and I think since we still have not figured out, you know, how to concretely with our, you know, normal tools of 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 science uh, how to how to you know note down make an equation of consciousness stuff like that since we're still not able to do it uh not the only reason but one of the reasons is why i think it is something different i'm not saying there are like you know spirits might as well be it makes no difference depends on what you mean by spirits of course but uh that it is something different and i think one of these funny things when you start thinking about it in science is always that we sort of ignore our own consciousness we ignore the observer we ignore the fact that every single measurement every single experiment ever has to go through this human brain processing uh, and we pretend as if this brain is objective in any way but obviously it's not there's a billion biases in our brain due to our evolutionary history and how we're brought up and, and a million other things science of course is a beautiful system to figure stuff out and we have made tremendous progress but uh, i think to understand consciousness we need to expand uh we need to expand our minds literally to sort of be able to comprehend that there might be levels of of existence and and yeah just just that the world is way more weird you know than than we think i i think it's funny when when i see people talking about you know maybe string theory that at the fundamental scales everything might be might be made of vibrating strings of energy and vibrating loops of energy and you know that there might be infinite amount of universes uh which i totally agree on but that's a different story and people are like sort of fine contemplating these ideas in their heads but you know why to say that maybe consciousness might be something more uh you know they're like wow oh, that's crazy talk <laughs> that's <laughs> that's so funny to me when, when you think about it when you think about it i i i say it's not a huge leap uh, to say that it's possible that consciousness is unique and something different uh my thoughts and opinions always change i'm always open to criticism i'm the first one to admit uh when when i am wrong and i do it happily because then i know that i figure something out or i understand something new about the world so you know i'm not one of those people obsessed with some idea i just want to know the truth what actually exists how the world actually works has been my obsession for the longest time uh, but where this path of you know learning about the world and doing different kinds of experiments with my own mind and the outside world uh, currently uh, where I sort of have a hint or, or some, some sort of inkling something 
a feeling is that like it might be that consciousness is fundamental that uh, there would possibly be something like panpsychism uh, which which people are not really fans of you know uh, the, the most objectivists or, or however you want to put it but um I think that is entirely possible and not such a huge leap to make. It would just be one other crazy discovery next to a hundred other crazy discoveries about their universe. And and I don't see how that's so incomprehensible that, oh, actually this thing, that's the most important thing about existence, like maybe it's actually special. <laughs> I hope you get how I find this funny, you know, that the most special thing in the universe, without our conscious experience, it would be nothing. Nothing would be worth anything. There would be no joy, there would be no pleasure, there would be no value of anything. You know, the first place and the last place that stops for everything is our consciousness. There is nothing else. Everything that happens in the experience goes through our consciousness. It's literally everything, all we have, you know. Uh, and so saying, oh, that couldn't possibly be anything, you know, more special, is, is just funny to me. And it depends on how you mean special. I don't mean that, like, you know, we have critical sciences and thinking, and then we jump into the, some, you know, pseudoscience thing. No, not at all. I'm talking about actually understanding the world and science and just expanding it. You know, we need to fit together these ideas of how the world might actually work. And I think, uh, I think that is important. I think we are... I'm not worrying about it because I know that eventually and already we see the direction that we're headed that way of uh, expanding what we think is possible and, and our concepts of, of um, what we think is normal and possible. So I'm not worried about it. It's, it's just a funny time to live in. Um, so China brain, you know, I, uh, I think the body might function, but I, I wouldn't, I would be surprised if it was conscious. Same way as this piece of paper. Uh, like you know you do all the calculations and things and yet you know if you do like one calculation per minute you know or no matter how fast you do it isn't do you maybe need to do it at really fast speeds that the calculations happen condensed in some piece of matter like a brain or some computational device that you know concentration of like similar calculations about a certain thing maybe uh, create some field of consciousness or whatever uh, or could it be like, you know, one calculation per millennia and you would still have consciousness? Um, I think these just illustrate uh, the questions, uh, important questions. So uh, the world is, is endlessly fascinating and strange. You know, I look forward to the time where, um, where we have a better future and artificial intelligence and where we can comprehend more, understand more, expand our minds. Uh, we're headed in that direction, I believe. If we don't kill ourselves, then uh, within the next, you know, decade, uh, we will see the world fundamentally change. So these are just some of my thoughts about, you know, the China brain thought experiment and consciousness and just, you know, uh, all the craziness. So I hope there was something interesting here for you. If you have any thoughts, please share them in the comments. And of course, thank you so much for watching and take care.